The Carboniferous Period Spanning from approximately 359 to 299 million years ago marks a pivotal era in Earth's geological and biological history. This epoch predated the age of the dinosaurs by about 60 million years, and it set the stage for the evolution of life as we know it. It also played a crucial role in shaping our planet's resources and ecosystems. The name Carboniferous is derived from the Latin word for coal bearing, a fitting moniker given that many of the coal deposits we use today were formed during this very period. The Carboniferous world was vastly different from our modern Earth, with unique climates, extraordinary extraordinary creatures and geological processes that defined this era. To fully appreciate the Carboniferous period, we are going to travel back to understand its complex timeline. We're going to meet the creatures and discover the curious case of the Carboniferous period. Imagine if you had a home on the internet for all things dinosaur and prehistoric. A universe where you can live and learn all you want about the ancient creatures that occupy your mind. Find it only here on the Dinosaur Channel. Welcome to the Dinoverse. Let's begin by learning about the fauna, the animal life of the Carboniferous period. But before we do that, I want to remind you guys that you can subscribe, turn on those notifications, and become a member on this channel to support us. It goes a long way to supporting us. We cannot create these videos without your financial support. We have a PayPal link in the description below, and becoming a member really goes a long way to helping us out. The Carboniferous period is also famous for its giant insects and other arthropods. The high oxygen levels in the atmosphere during this time allowed for arthropods to grow to the size that would be absolutely impossible today. For example, one of the most famous is Meganeura, a griffin fly related to modern dragonflies. It looks very visually like a dragonfly and had a wingspan of up to 65 centimeters. Another really famous one is Arthropleura, a relative of modern millipedes, and it could grow up to 2.6 meters long, making it the largest known land invertebrate all time. A giant centipede millipede. Imagine that, crazy. Other notable arthropods from this period include giant scorpions, some of which were aquatic, and early cockroaches. The development of wings in insects is also thought to have occurred during the Carboniferous, although the exact origin of insect flight is still debated among scientists. It's important to state that the Carboniferous period was a very diverse and fascinating time. This era saw significant evolutionary developments in both marine and terrestrial environments. In the seas, fish continued to diversify, building on the variety established during the Devonian period. However, the armored jawed fish known as placoderm which had been dominant in the Devonian, quickly became extinct at the beginning of the Mississippian stage. Cartilaginous fish like sharks and stingrays and bony fish persisted through the Carboniferous. One group of fish, the Crossopterians, were known for their lobe-like fins. Another group, the Dipnoi or lungfish, had the remarkable ability to breathe air. These Paleocycnoids, smaller fish with ray-like fins, became a dominant fish group during the Carboniferous, replacing previously dominant Crossopterians and Dipnoi. Sharks were a significant presence in the Carboniferous Seas as well. One of the most common was the Cladocilic, which was a dominant predator in the oceans. The marine environment also hosted Brightidons, a type of cartilaginous fish with teeth adapted for crushing shells. In freshwater environments, there were also a type of shark known as the Orthocanvas. Fossils of this fish have been found in freshwater deposits from the Pennsylvanian stage in both Europe and North America. And is it clear right now that I don't know how to pronounce any of the names of these creatures? No, but when doing research for this episode, I just established that it's going to be impossible for me to get the, <laughs> the pronunciation. So just bear with me, guys. The Carboniferous period is sometimes also referred to as the Age of Amphibians, as these creatures were the dominant terrestrial vertebrates on much of this timeline. Amphibians were becoming larger and more diverse, with some species resembling modern crocodiles. These animals could also also grew up to nearly 20 feet long and had sharp teeth, making them formidable predators. During this period, amphibians began to develop thicker, scaly skin. This helped them retain moisture and spend more time away from water. This adaptation allowed them to become less dependent on aquatic habitats. They also evolved a specialized type of egg called the aminote egg. This egg had a membrane that retained fluid which allowed gas exchange. This protected the developing embryo and was a crucial step in the evolution of fully terrestrial vertebrates. One of the most significant developments in animal evolution during the Carboniferous was the appearance of the first reptiles. These early reptiles that were found fossilized in tree stumps were small, agile, and lizard-like. The evolution of reptiles marked a major step in the colonization of land by vertebrates, as they were the first fully terrestrial vertebrates that could reproduce without having to return to the water. The earliest known reptile is Hylonomus, 
which lived in what is now Nova Scotia, Canada. Fossils of this tiny creature less than 20 centimeters long have been found in the remains of hollow lycopod tree stumps from the lower Pennsylvanian period. These early reptiles were preserved because they became trapped in the cavities left by decaying trees. Now let's talk about the landscape of the Carboniferous. What did this place actually look like? What did Earth actually look like back then? The Carboniferous landscape was characterized by vast, steaming swamps and dense forest. These stretched as far as the eyes could see. Towering trees with massive trunks dominated the skyline and their canopies creating a thick green tapestry overhead. The air was very heavy with moisture, very humid and rich in oxygen, making the atmosphere substantially different from what we experience today. The layout of the land and sea during this period was relatively uniform. Continents were largely centered around the equator, with few significant ocean, bays, or inlets. The interior of these land masses experienced considerable erosion through the Carboniferous, while shallow seas covered the continental shelves along their edges. These outer regions of the Carboniferous continents would eventually become what we now call continental interiors. Further out to sea, deeper troughs known as geosynclines existed. These areas would over millions of years transform into the mountain ranges we know today through complex sedimentary and tectonic processes. The transformation of these geocyclines into mountain ranges is a testament to the dynamic nature of Earth's geology and the profound changes that can occur over millions of years. As for the plant life of the Carboniferous, it was a lush world out there diverse, and it was very much unlike anything we'd see in the modern world. The warm, humid climate and high levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide created ideal conditions for plant growth, leading to the development of huge, vast forests and swamps. One of the most characteristic plants of the Carboniferous was the giant club moss, or the leptidendron. These trees could grow up to 50 meters tall, with trunks over a meter in diameter. Unlike modern trees, leptidendron had a relatively small crown of leaves at the top of a tall, branchless trunk. Their trunks were composed of a central stem surrounded by a thick mat of roots, giving them stability in the soft, swampy soil. Calamites, a giant relative of the modern horsetails, was also another common sight in the Carboniferous. These plants could grow up to 30 meters tall and had a segmented stem with whorls of needle-like leaves at each joint. One of the most significant developments in the plant evolution during the Carboniferous was the widespread appearance of seeds. This adaptation allowed plants to reproduce in drier environments, paving the way for colonization of more diverse terrestrial habitats. The incredible abundance of diversity of plants during the Carboniferous period led to the formation of vast coal deposits. As plants died and fell into swampy waters, they were quickly buried by the sediment. Over millions of years, these layers of plant material were compressed and transformed into coal seams. These are the very coal seams that have fueled human industry for centuries. The Carboniferous period left a lasting legacy that continues to influence our world today. The vast coal deposits formed during this time Time have been a crucial energy source for human civilization, powering us through the Industrial Revolution and continuing to be a significant, controversial part of energy mix today. The evolutionary developments that occurred during the Carboniferous set the stage for dominance of reptiles, any subsequent Permian and then Mesozoic eras. The first amnioids that appeared in the Carboniferous were the ancestors of all reptiles, birds, and mammals. The Carboniferous also provides valuable insights into past climate change. The dramatic shift from the greenhouse conditions of the early Carboniferous to the icehouse conditions of the late Carboniferous and early Permian offers lessons about the long-term effects of changes in atmospheric composition. It is absolutely wild to imagine what a diverse and crazy different time in Earth's history that had giant arthropods, that had giant spiders, giant scorpions, giant millipedes, and giant dragonflies muddling about in swamps that still affects us till this very day. I mean, we are directly impacted by the lives of those millions of creatures that existed back then till this very day, powering our energy sources, our cars, our houses. It's really crazy to imagine. It's one of the most amazing things about paleontology and why I love these topics so much is that just reading and doing the research for videos like this, you get such an appreciation for the many reincarnations of Earth's history between the Permian to the Devonian to the Mesozoic to the Carboniferous that have taken place here, the many stories that existed here before ours. We just make up a very, very small piece of the puzzle when there were millions and billions of creatures that existed on this planet before us, and they affect our lives to this very day. If you love our channel and you love these kinds of videos, please make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification button. Give us a dinosaur-sized thumbs up and comment down below a video you'd like to see us cover again in the future. If you do want to financially support us, you can with a PayPal link down below in the description or by becoming a member so we can continue to make amazing videos just like this for you guys. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.